The 2014 Acona 250 was the ninth race of the 2014 Arca Menard Series season. It was your normal Arca race at Elko. 24 entries, however, one of the teams in the garage had a rather infamous race. Carter Two Motorsports had two entries for the race, the number 40 of John Haney and the number 97 of Jay Curry. However, after the previous weekend's race at Michigan saw an engine failure for the number 97, which had been driven by Tommy O'Leary IV, Carter II brought the exact same cars from Michigan to Elko with no changes to them, meaning the 97 showed up without a working engine, and the 40 showed up with the Michigan gear and setup still in it. The plan was to start in park to keep both cars in the points, however with no engine in the 97, it was forced to withdraw, meaning Carter II was down to one entry. As if entering the car was bad without a working engine, the number 40 car had no business being on track, especially the driver. Enter John Haney, a former person who had worked at a driving experience club and had joined Carter II Motorsports as the team's hauler driver, who had no real racing experience at all. Now you question, how the hell did he get approved to run? Well, enter in one of the two Carter II owners, Dana Carter, who lied to ARC officials claiming Haney had a background in late models and other credentials, along with telling the officials they were planning to pull out early in the race anyway. Haney was then granted to make one lap of practice or qualifying to be eligible to start. Keep in mind this car was set up to run Michigan with a Daytona Super Speedway gear in the car. Haney didn't take a lap in any of the practice sessions and his two lap qualifying run was absolutely terrible, being almost four seconds off the pole time with the car pushing in the corners very badly. Haney was then told to take the green flag and immediately pull off, ensuring that nothing could go wrong. However, Haney himself called an audible, and well, this happened. Now he's in a hurry, Rick. Uh, oh, we got trouble. We got trouble in turns one and two. Our leader's around. And finger spins over in turn two. Tom Hessert's teammate, the 22 of Austin Wayne Self, Justin Boston, sliding to a stop on lap four. That's our first caution of the night here at Elko Speedway. Wild action down in turn two. Andy Grant in fig caused a, That caused a little bit of a problem right off the bat. Take another look at it here. There's Hesser to the 77. Enfinger just lost it by himself. Well, there's a lap car right in there, and I, I think that's what triggered the whole thing there and got it going, the 40 car, and uh, everybody's on the brakes. Cars early in trouble. That was the 40 bouncing off the infield and bouncing up into the race leader, as Andy mentioned. The Triple K90 of Enfinger in trouble. Haney gets caught within one lap by the leaders as leader number 90 Grant Enfinger goes around him. Haney goes into the grass into turn one as if he got nervous and completely wipes out the leader Enfinger and causing a stack up with the other lead cars to pile in. Haney was then ordered immediately to the pits and was confronted by ARC officials. I couldn't find out exactly what happened post-race, however Haney was banned from ARCA competition in future races, and ARCA had strictly tightened their approval process for the future. In the two laps that Haney made, something broke in the oil pump as well, meaning both Carter II entries left Elko with no working motors. This incident isn't wildly remembered by most race fans, as racing Twitter wasn't as big as it was today from 2014. However, it is a story that is still talked about in the ARCA garage to this day, even 10 years later, especially when Elko comes around, the John Haney incident is brought up at least once.